Hello everyone, welcome to the Mixed Reality Toolkit tutorials and in this section we are going to cover the speech input. In the previous sections we have seen uh, different kind of pointers and uh, all the focus related events and handling and everything. So this is another uh, you know primary form of input in any Mixed Reality application that is speech. Now uh, speech is basically of two types, right? One is the dictation mode and the other one is the uh, voice command mode, right? So the, the dis dictation mode basically allows the users, uh, you know, to record the audio based on what they speak, and then uh, it will convert that into a transcription text, right? So that's what uh, the dictation model does. Uh, the main use or main purpose of it in uh, applications, you actually use it in your day-to-day -day life in while you are dictating an email or a message using Google Assistant or Siri or Cortana or anything, right? So a similar thing or even when you are conversing with one of these uh, virtual assistants. So uh, it's fairly simple to implement it in uh, HoloLens as well. And we, that's what we are going to cover first. And the second one will be uh, the voice commands. Basically, those are a short you know, uh, you know, set of words uh, forming a command. And uh, most of them would, be, would have some action verbs to you know, uh, state that what command it is. Uh, like uh, make a call or uh, what is the weather or uh, uh, you know, uh, set an appointment or things like that. So um, that will be what we will be covering uh, next in our application, right? Uh, so for uh, let's start with the dictation then, All right? Uh, now I'm going to uh, disable both these cubes because we have been using them for pointer uh, in our previous sessions. Those who have, those who are directly landing on this video, please uh, look into those previous sessions where uh, we have covered all those focus as well as uh, uh, you know the pointer based events and uh, other different pointers. Uh, uh, so I'm going to disable these two uh, objects right now. Uh, Right. We don't need it. We are going to create a new uh, object to demonstrate our uh, speech capabilities. So let me go ahead and disable it. All right. All right. Now I'm going to create, let's start with the sphere this time. Um, that will be our... Uh, all right, that's the sphere. And from materials, I'm going to pick, let's pick green this time. All right, so we have a green sphere. Let's see the game view. All right, not yet. Uh, there you go. I'm going to reset it. All right, and I'm going to reduce the shape to 0 0.5. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in front of the camera. And now, yeah, there you go. Uh, we need to add one text. So I'm going to add a 3D text there you go and uh, put it in recent mode and I'm gonna position it right below the yeah that sounds pretty much fine all right now so uh, first thing uh, for a dictation handler we need to add two capabilities one is basically for speech we need to add two capabilities first one is uh, uh, in the project settings we need to go ahead and add uh, two capabilities for microphone and internet explorer so if you have been following this series before you can already see when we created this project itself we set up the internet client all right and uh, microphone capabilities along with the spatial perception 
Right, so these three we already did set up. So if you haven't, uh, or if you are starting this uh, series new, then uh, make sure that you turn on these two features in order to you know make sure that your speech capabilities are enabled. So that's the uh, uh, important thing that we need to take care of. All right, uh, now let me go ahead and uh, make some adjustments to this one to give it a proper uh, term. Let's say um, speech to text. Now uh, we are going to add the dictation uh, handler uh, in the sphere uh, game object actually, right? Um, so uh, dictation handler, there you go. So in, in this uh, dictation handler, you can see there are a uh, a couple of uh, parameters. So the first one is is focus required. Uh, as usual, it simply uh, you know checks if uh, the focus is required on this particular game object for the you know for the function uh, to work uh, in order for the dictation to work. Right. Uh, then uh, the next one is basically uh, you know the initial uh, timeout. So the initial timeout uh, simply means that uh, uh, the number of uh, seconds it will wait and uh, you know until the session ends if there has been no audio uh, uh, from the beginning for that particular session. In the case of an auto, uh, you know, uh, silence timeout is basically during the session, uh, how much time it will uh, wait before the session ends, uh, you know, when there was a audio feedback, let's say like uh, a pause between sentences, right? So it will wait for a certain number of uh, seconds uh, before uh, it times out between two uh, uh, sentences. Now the recording time is basically uh, you know the number of seconds for which the dictation service is going to listen and to record until the session is uh, ended. So uh, in this case that's going to be like 15 seconds. Right, uh, so that's uh, basically the uh, different properties, and the last one being, uh, you know, start dictation at start. So that basically uh, mentions about, uh, you know, uh, should the dictation start uh, while the uh, script is getting, uh, you know, uh, activated itself by the Unity uh, using its uh, start function. In this case, we are going to we have turned it off. Uh, now we can have it on and off in both ways, but I'm going to show you both eventually. Uh, while uh, you know, uh, where in the code where we have, uh, you know, we, we are turning it on uh, when this feature is turned uh, checked out, checked on, and uh, how we can manually start dictation when this feature is uh, checked off as of now. Uh, you know, just the way you see now. Uh, then there are uh, four different kind of events that is exposed by the dictation handler and each of them uh, to, uh, we can attach a unity event into uh, you know, to handle each of those events. So the first one is a dictation hypothesis and uh, that particular event is raised when the user speaks with you know some early trans rough transcriptions of the audio that has been captured uh, up until that point. Right. And the second one is basically the dictation result, which is raised at end of an each sentence when there is a pause between, uh, you know, sentences. And uh, that transcription will include everything, uh, you know, that has been captured up until that point. And then the dictation complete is basically raised at the end of the recording session with the full final transcription of the audio. Now the dictation error is raised uh, at the, uh, you know, uh, only when there is an error in dictation that is like uh, when there is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, policy error or when there is a uh, permission error, like you have not turned on the microphone permissions for the application. In those scenarios, the dictation service fails to start. In uh, At that point, the dictation error will throw with an error message and, uh, you know, so th that you can handle it accordingly. So uh, those are the, uh, you know, these are the four kind of, uh, you know, uh, things that, uh, events that will be raised. And we will be seeing the first three, uh, you know, uh, right now. And uh, in the next session, uh, of uh, when we deploy, uh, you know, uh, in the emulator, that's when we will see this uh, uh, dictation error in action. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, first we need to uh, add a new Unity event to each of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, events that is exposed by the dictation handler. 
uh, so for hypothesis, for result, for complete and error. Now I'm going to create a script uh, to handle these, uh, you know, uh, events. So let me create a script here called uh, C sharp script, and uh, I'll name it uh, Sphere Controller. And uh, there you go. All right. Let's go ahead and edit it. All right. Now I'm gonna keep the uh, start function here. We'll, we're gonna need it later. So I'm going to uh, uh, remove the update uh, for now and uh, add the functions which I have got, uh, you know, copied into my clipboard from, uh, you know, uh, something which I already written actually. And the, the once we uh, paste it here, I'm going to explain that. All right. So uh, here you go. Uh, what we are going to do is. Uh, we are handling all the four functions first, and uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, create a reference for the uh, displaying that uh, text uh, transcription, which is captured from the audio that we are going to, uh, you know, uh, capture from the di dictation. So I'm uh, creating a reference for the text mesh that we have added to the scene, and uh, then uh, for each of the event, I'm simply, uh, you know, adding a log and then uh, displaying the text that is captured through dictation in the, uh, you know, the text mesh, uh, basically in that three text. So uh, uh, those are the, uh, you know, two things that uh, we are going to do for each of these operations again. And uh, uh, we are not going to see the result. And uh, now I am going to add this script into this uh, game object and uh, uh, let's add game object to each of those uh, uh, first, let's add this uh, text mesh, um, and now we can add the uh, sphere to the runtime object uh, for each of those uh, events exposed by the dictation handler. And there you go. And uh, for error, now let's do the function, which is the sphere controller and the dictation hypothesis, and uh, the sphere again, sphere controller and dictation. Result and then the sphere controller at the dictation complete. There you go. And the last one is the uh, dictation error. All right. So now what we are going to do is uh, we are uh, since we have not turned on the start detection at the start parameter. What we are going to do is we are going to uh, you know manually uh, turn on the recording or the start the uh, dictation process when uh, the focus is entered on our game object, right? So for that in the script, what we would do is we'll implement our uh, you know I mixed reality focus handler and it's on focus enter and on focus exit events and uh, uh, then in the focus enter what we would do is we will uh, you know uh, uh, start the dictation and in the exit we will stop the dictation right so that's that's what we are going to do next right now we have the uh, start function here first i'm going to do is i'm getting a reference to the dictation handler uh, uh, you know, uh, object uh, through the, uh, the, you know, uh, which is a component already in this particular game object. So let me add the dictation handler and uh, now add the namespace. All right. And next we have to, in the start, we have to get the component here yeah, through get component of dictation handler. There you go. And uh, now uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to implement the uh, iFocus, uh, iMix of reality uh, focus handler. So iMix of reality focus handler. Now uh, I added a colon instead of a comma. Um, so remove that. There you go. All right. And uh, we have implemented all of them. If you see, 
below you can see the on focus center and on focus exit now i'm going to replace these two with uh, the code i have copied uh, from my other project so let me paste that here all right so you can see that i'm looking for if dictation equal to you know not equal to null then i'm starting the uh, dictation uh, using uh, you know from the actual uh, dictation handler uh, class and also on uh, focus exit i'm stopping the recording All right now let's go and take a look at that uh, you know the start recording and uh, the stop recording inside the dictation handler All right so uh, exactly what happens is basically the dictation uh, handler uh, will take the dictation system and uh, it will uh, call the starting uh, start recording and the stop recording of the dictation system itself right. um, let me open that uh, all right uh, here in here you can see we have this uh, private boolean start recording on start property and it is turned to false the same thing that we have seen in the inspector so if that one is turned on uh, to true then we simply call the start recording and this is the same start recording that we are calling in uh, you know our uh, dictation start recording through this dictation handler instance so here what happens is like in the dictation uh, uh, you know handler it simply uses the dictation uh, system uh, to call the actual start uh, recording passing the same you know the game object and that initial timeout and the uh, you know auto silence timeout and the recording time the same parameters that we set uh, through that inspector and in the case of the stop recording also it simply calls the stop recording of the dictation system uh, you know that's uh, defined below uh, as you can see Let's go back, uh, you know, to Unity and, uh, uh, you know, uh, try out our application. So uh, you can see that now we are out of focus, and as soon as I move in, uh, yeah, dictation starting. Now the and there you go, uh, it, dictation stopped, and once I move in again, uh, dictation is starting. And now that it uh, again we are not able to see it, so I'm going to zoom out uh, so that we get a better picture of uh, you know things. Uh, dictation stop now. Dictation starting. Okay, so uh, now we can see that uh, you know uh, it's it's capturing perfectly fine, and uh, you are able to see all those uh, uh, you know uh, text transcripts uh, there actually. So uh, what uh, now I'm more out of the focus and dictation stop. So let's take a look at the console here. You can see all those hypotheses, right? It's trying to uh, hypothesize the the you know the dictation that or the uh, talk that I'm making, and uh, it is trying to convert that to text at every step uh, at a certain intervals, right? So that's basically uh, hypothesis events triggering every uh, now and then uh, at a specific interval. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can see that. That the dictation result as well as our dictation uh, complete events has also uh, been triggered at the end of the sentence and, and then at the end of the session itself. You can also see that warning uh, that are unable to uh, you know uh, uh, stop the recording. Uh, that's actually uh, won't be present in the future. Uh, you know, if when you upgrade this toolkit version, as a matter of fact, it is this is present in the old one. So uh, that's basically about the uh, dictation system, actually. And one more thing uh, that I wanted to, uh, you know, let you know is that for in order to enable that dictation system, you need to make sure that you have that input data provider pro in enabled in the Mixer Reality Toolkit input section. All right. So, so here in this input section, you can go to that input data provider. You can see that Windows detection input. There, uh, you have that type defined, uh, you know, along with the uh, uh, the, the uh, platforms uh, enabled and uh, mind that uh, it is only supported uh, for Windows platforms like Windows standalone universal and you know Windows editor so that means it's basically for the uh, Windows systems as well as for HoloLens and Windows mixed reality systems only and it's not really supported uh, for the uh, you know oculus v uh, oculus and uh, unity VR or those kind of other external systems at this point so that's <clears throat> that's basically uh, you know everything about uh, the dictation system and uh, now we are going to look into the uh, you know voice commands and uh, how uh, to make that work 
Now, in order for enabling these uh, voice commands, uh, what we are going to do is first we are going to create some uh, actions that represents, uh, uh, you know, some actions that need to be performed in the uh, application, right? And then uh, what we are going to do is we are going to attach those actions to some speech commands so that those actions can be invoked through a speech command. So let's go ahead to this uh, Mixed Reality input profile and create a new uh, input actions. And if you can, uh, let's go down and see uh, yeah input actions we need to create a new one because the one which we have right now is the standard one so I'm gonna call, uh, clone it first and uh, I rename it to MR input action profile and uh, yep and now we are gonna clone it right there you go so now it gets automatically assigned right uh, the uh, the one which we newly created now uh, all we need to do is uh, we need to create a, a new action here so go ahead and click on a, a new action so well we are not able to see that if you scroll down yeah you can see that so I'm gonna delete it again and I'm gonna create it one more time yeah so you can see yeah uh, the new action was created now let's give it a name right so what does that action represent so let's name it like uh, uh, you know, uh, change color, and the action will be digital. Uh, so let's name it as uh, change. Uh, yeah, change color. So you can change that uh, color of the uh, you know ball, uh, for example, or uh, two other kind of operations. Now the digital is basically saying that okay, it is not representing any controller operations with you know a degree of freedom or uh, you know a hand gesture or something like that right uh, so okay I'm gonna change it to uh, change color now um, so uh, you know a speech command is basically a digital uh, command now uh, an action can be represented in multiple ways uh, that's that's also uh, there right so multiple kind of operation can invoke an action like a speech or a controller operation both can invoke the same action uh, so this is where the abstraction comes in which we have explained in the previous ones now what I'm going to uh, do okay I've, uh, do is I'm going to disable this dictation handler uh, script from the attribute so that uh, you know we can add our speech voice command uh, handlers the reason being uh, it can only uh, you know uh, either a dictation or uh, the voice commands can be enabled at a time basically a keyword recognizer or a dictation recognizer from the unity API can be enabled at a time uh, not both of them at the same time right so I am um, uh, that's why we had to disable it the, uh, again internally even these unity API's of dictation recognizer and keyword recognizers internally uses the Windows API's right and that is the reason this this whole uh, speech functionality is available only for Windows platform I, um, uh, I think I forgot. Yeah, we forgot to add the uh, speech commands. But uh, for now, we are, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, go ahead and uh, add those uh, uh, speech in the input section. Let's go to the input section. Scroll down and in the speech section yeah we need to uh, clone that again there is a that's a speech command profile and we are going to clone that into MR a speech commands profile and clone it and it gets automatically assigned so now you can see uh, there are already some of those commands which is you know mapped to some of the speech commands uh, I mean some of the actions mapped to some of the speech commands like uh, menu select toggle diagnostics and all right and you can see those uh, actions there uh, in the input actions but there are more actions that you can actually map it to right a lot of them so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create an additional uh, an additional speech command and then assign uh, our action uh, I mean uh, you know the one that we newly created to a uh, you know uh, a keyword like uh, uh, change ball color let's say All right so that's what we are going to do right now so uh, let me create a new command and I'm going to assign the key code as keyword as the change ball color and uh, now what we will do is like we are going to map our action uh, to change color right that's the one which we newly created uh, 
Now, the next thing is we are going to uh, assign a key code, uh, let's say to C, because it's change color. Uh, let's scroll down and uh, there you go. Uh, C. That should be fine. So a key code is basically nothing but uh, an alternative for a, a keyword. So in case you are not able to speak that command or you don't have a microphone access while you are debugging or uh, you know within Unity editor, you can trigger the same action uh, with uh, by pressing the keys uh, you know uh, C uh, in the keyboard, right? So it will invoke the same. It will uh, trigger the same uh, speech event uh, with the same text called the change uh, ball color. Right, so that's what uh, you know the key code does. So it's basically just an alternative, um, and the other one is basically the uh, you know uh, localization key is nothing but uh, it's for a you know to support a different language, uh, you know uh, for localizing. Uh, so now we have mapped our action and our uh, keyword, and also provided an alternative key uh, you know key code uh, for our uh, new speech command. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go back to our uh, you know uh, sphere controller and we are going to uh, you know not sphere controller our sphere game object and uh, we are going to handle uh, you know these uh, this particular event right uh, the speech events basically so for that uh, there are actually two ways you can handle a speech event and we are, I'm going to show you both so uh, for now I'm going to start with the first one is a speech input handler. Right, and uh, that's pretty much straightforward. And it has some parameters like is focus required. Again, uh, whether you know this should be trigger triggered only when there is a focus on the game object. And uh, another one is a persistent keywords. Persistent keywords is when you are using different scenes, uh, you know, and there is a scene transition, and you want to persist this object, and uh, you know, so that you don't lose those commands, and you want to use these commands across multiple scenes. In that case, you will just uh, you know check this, and uh, uh, it will just uh, register it as don't destroy on load. Uh, you know that's a, a Unity API. Uh, don't destroy uh, on load. Okay, you can go ahead and check it out. Okay, and the last one is basically a speech confirmation tool to prefab. So that's basically nothing but it's a prefab which is of type speech. Uh, uh, you know confirmation tooltip so it's a, it's a class defined so any prefab which has that particular class defined will be eligible to be added to that uh, particular uh, entry and uh, in a later version we will have we will when we create our own prefab and I'm, I'm going to uh, demo this one again uh, with adding a you know tooltip for our uh, speech prefabs right now that's this is uh, not in the scope of this current session so I'm gonna skip it and uh, uh, let's move on to handling this uh, you know uh, uh, speech inputs so right now we have not assigned anything so let's go ahead and assign one and uh, there is an element and we have to assign a keyword right now there is nothing assigned so I'm going to select our so those are those speech commands which we just saw not all the, these are not actions these are the speech commands remember so I'm assigning our change ball color that's the speech uh, word that we are going to speak in order to invoke some action right uh, in this case it simply looks for that specific word and uh, we can assign any function uh, that needs to be, uh, you know, invoked when that particular word is spoken. So, mind you, there is no link between this, this, uh, you know, speech command spoken and the action that is being triggered in the speech input handler. It's a direct mapping between the speech in uh, a speech uh, keyword and the action that we are going to assign. So uh, right now in Visual Studio, I'm going to, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add two, uh, you know, a new function uh, for uh, change color, right? So let's create a function called change color and uh, simply add a log again, uh, you know, uh, let's say debug.log, right? And, uh, command received to change color yeah that should do and we can also add the uh, text uh, you know uh, one second yeah I'm gonna copy this guy okay and uh, yeah equal to the same message will be displayed in that uh, 
text mesh, you know, in the 3D text. Nope, nope. Hmm, not about that. Yep. Okay, there. All right. So now this function will be invoked. The change color function will be invoked every time I say change ball color, right? So that's that's the only thing. It is not going to invoke the change color function, uh, change color action. That's the difference. So uh, we we will see in the next uh, when I explain further, you will see you know how that happens. So, now one more thing that you need to understand before we go ahead and play is that the speech uh, input handler is nothing but uh, you know just an implementation, a class implementation of a, a, an interface called I speech input handler, just like I a mixed reality focus handler or a mixed reality focus changed and a pointer handler and all those things. This is just another implementation of I speech mixed reality speech uh, handler, right? So if you want to uh, change the implementation. Uh, of uh, how this uh, speech handler works you can just go ahead and uh, you know uh, uh, have your own implementation like uh, this so here it's basically it has something called the key uh, keyword and response it's basically a uh, you know uh, a type which consists of uh, a unity event and a string uh, uh, a string called a keyword so uh, it, again uh, this this particular interface defines uh two uh you know uh basic uh, you know basically one uh, uh event that is the uh, speech uh, i think it's speech keyword recognized uh, we, we will get into that i think it's uh, below yeah on speech recognized yeah on speech keyword recognized so that's the event that we need to implement right so all you do is like you look for in that dictionary called keyword and response uh, that if there is a you know a unity event assigned to a particular string keyword right if there is one then uh, invoke this function so here this is the keyword and response class and you can see that there is a unity event and there's a keyword and uh, uh, in in our below of a function uh, when when the speech system triggers this event once it captures a particular uh, you know speech command and uh, it reaches this point uh, in this uh, imix reality speech handler implementation and uh, you know we are simply going to check if there is a you know matching unity event and if there is one simply call the invoke on that and then you're also going to say uh, you know even data dot use saying that okay this has been already been handled right so that's uh, pretty much it and in the event data command keyword that contains the actual keyword that was spoken right so yeah that's pretty much it about uh, you know uh, the uh, iMixer reality speech handler. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, uh, play. All right. Um, now I'm going to speak that uh, command again. Uh, remember, this is going to be uh, out of focus at first, and we have turned on is focus required to true. Right. So. Uh, we need to make sure that we are looking at the object before uh, we speak the command only then it will be registered so in case that is turned off then uh, if the focus if we are saying that the focus is not required then it will be registered as global events which means it will receive all the speech inputs right and it will react to all those uh, ones if there is a matching uh, input so now I'm going to say change ball color there you go so you can see the uh, you know that console that the same uh, message that we wanted low is currently locked and uh, once i go out to focus then it's again point of starting but the meditation is not actually working it's just that those messages are appearing uh, but the meditation will work because we have more that uh, you know uh, it disable that script actually so it won't start uh, uh, again So uh, you can see that the command received uh, you know the keyword was recognized and it uh, you know acted accordingly uh, now, what I'm going to do is uh, next is that, uh, you know, I'm going to try with a key code uh, that is C. I'm going to press that and see, you can see that it will be recognized again. There you go. See that? So if I press it multiple times, it is going to be recognized multiple times. But if it is out of uh, focus, even if I am I'm actually pressing this key again, but it's not going to make any effect because it's not going to, uh, you know, uh, see those events. So that's uh, 
uh, that's the in focus and uh, out of focus based uh, uh, you know events uh, now the next thing uh, that I wanted to note uh, is that this is one way to handle the speech inputs and uh, although there is a drawback to this this particular approach and there is an advantage to uh, compared to the other one which I'm going to show you so what I am going to do is I am going to uh, you know inactivate the uh, the speech input handler and add another component called uh, input action handler right so the input action handler basically uh, you know uh, lets you handle one particular action right? and it will have two events basically called the action uh, started and action ended right? and you can it is a generic one not just for speech and you can handle all sort of actions within that like that right not just the speech one right? so I'm going to select the change color action uh, to be handled in this particular one right so that's what we are going to handle here Right, so it simply says whenever I get a notification that this particular action has been occurred, I am going to call these two events. So that's basically what input action handler does. Right, so if you want, uh, we can take a look at the uh, code. Right, so here you can see that it implements uh, iMixer Reality Input Action Handler. Right, so again, you can you can change it as per your needs. Again, it only has two uh, events. One is the on action started, and the other one is on action entered. It is simply going to call, uh, you know, uh, invoke the uh, uh, event unity event attached to it. Simple as that. There is nothing uh, complicated in this piece. Right, so what what is what we are going to do is we are going to uh, you know assign the same sphere. Right, speech input handler, sorry, uh, speech controller, and then um, change color. The difference here is that it takes an additional attribute, right? It takes an additional attribute, uh, I mean, a parameter called base input event data. So, whatever uh, event data that was generated as part of the action will be passed in. Right, so we need to. Uh, uh, it's better that we modify our function, uh, you know, to have uh, just, you know, to, I'm gonna. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define change color with base input event data. Right. So uh, just to be, you know, compatible with the uh, Unity event defined. Change color action. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So it's uh, clear to all of us. There you go. Speech controller. Change color action. Right. So that one takes actually a base input event data, as you can see here. We are not going to do anything with it for now, uh, but just to show you in the demo, uh, this is what we are going to do. Now, um, just so that the picture is clear, what I'm going to do is. Uh, yeah, speech input handler is disabled, right? And, uh, and right now we only have the change color, and then uh, you know there is an input action started. Right now I'm, we can do the same thing uh, with the, the input action ended, right? So it's basically like what happens when an action occurred, started occurring, and then uh, the action has completed. Right? It's the same thing. Uh, that you can handle it in both those scenarios. So here we are only starting, uh, you know, uh, handling the action started event, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, it simply locks it here again, like uh, command receive to change the color. So just to be clear that it is, uh, you know, make sure that it's not this particular one that is being triggered. I'm going to change the text here, command received. Uh, so let's say action started. to change color. Same here too. Right? 
So now you can see this is just an action starter to change the color and here is command to save to change the color. Now if I go and start playing and here and now I can say uh, change ball color. Change ball color. There you go. So <clears throat> now you can see the action started to change color has been triggered, right? I can also trigger this by using the uh, you know keys uh, key uh, plus C because that will also trigger the same uh, action, right? For uh, change color, right? So. If I say change ball color, there you go. So you can see it. Uh, now, so in both the cases, the command you gave was the same thing, but the way you handled these two are different. So let's see uh, what is the pros and cons in both, right? Uh, let's take the first one in this case, the speech input handler. In this case of speech in ha input handler, uh, the identifying factor was actual keyword, the same keyword that you defined in the speech command profile, right, and then a corresponding action, right, and you can define all the keywords and its corresponding action in this one single script handler, speech input handler. So as I said, I can have more than one uh, to have you know more than function one functions be called for the same input right I can uh, I can have multiple operations happening and also I can have multiple keywords that can be handled let's say like this right so let's say menu I can have another one to handle select right so these are three keywords handling uh, handled by three different functions in this case, let's say I want only one here, I want, uh, there you go. So in the case of a select command, there is, when the select command is spoken, there is one action that is being taken. And when a case of a menu that is spoken, there are three actions that can be uh, concurrently happening. And in the case of change ball color, there could be two actions that could be concurrently happening. So, uh, so the thing is like you can uh, map one action or, or, or one, uh, you know, uh, one command. Uh, I am not saying action. I'm not, I'm saying command because you are not giving actions here. You are actually giving those keywords which are specifically spoken, right? So that's the difference. So you are uh, per key, uh, co per command, you can have multiple actions taken. And you can also define multiple commands and its corresponding actions in the same script. While in the case of input action handler, you can only have one action per input ha action handler, right? You can, you, uh, uh, there is a start, uh, start uh, event and there is an end event per action. So if you want, let's say uh, here we are tackling change color. That's the action, not the command spoken, that's any action. You can see all these options, while here, you will not see all the options, you will only see the ones which are speech related. That's another. That's the key difference, right? And another thing is, if I want to handle another action within this game object, then I need to add another input action handler with a different or the same it's up to you if uh, if you want to handle just the, the, the uh, just like here you, you know the same keyword is handled by three different operations if you want to have the same behavior you need to have three uh, uh, scripts input action scripts added and to have the same input action like change color and change color and then give different functions or you can have a different action like uh, uh, like menu and then it's start and event uh, start and end actions uh, or uh, functions that you want to be invoked you can do it that way too uh, in so it's about a choice the advantage uh, so that's one of the disadvantages. this one will let you uh, you know have all, everything in one single script while this won't right uh, but the difference is like you know the speech input handler breaks from that paradigm 
of the entire uh, concept of profiles and actions. So if you notice that the whole uh, reason that we defined that input action profile is for uh, the purpose that so the you guys or the developers don't have to worry about uh, you know the medium of input you just need to worry about the abstract actions that your applications you know has to handle uh, in this case uh, in the case of for example it doesn't matter if a particular uh, I want to change the color of the ball right I can do it through a controller by pressing on the control ball or I can do it through an eye gaze or I can do it through a command all should correspond would correspond to a single action right? it could technically so uh, the thing is like here um, that that thing uh, is broken here we are specifically uh, mapping to a keyword rather than to an action right uh, but here we are not concerned about you know what I am doing or what exact uh, you know medium uh, through which I am receiving an action, I am simply handling an action. That's the difference. I, I hope it's it's been clear. So in the input action handler, just repeating myself, input action handler, what happens is like I am not concerned of how I am going to have an action raised or which way it reaches to the application. I am simply dealing with an action. Right. So at an abstract level, I am only concerned about these are the operations my application uh, needs to worry about or, uh, you know, this particular ball needs to handle only these kind of actions. It doesn't matter if it is triggered through one way or the other. Right. Uh, so that's basically in that if you want to have that level of, uh, you know, abstraction and you want to carry that, you know, that principle onwards, then, uh, you know, having input action would be a better way. Uh, and rather than going for the speech input handler while if you really don't worry about that if you want but you have a lot of keywords uh, to handle and a lot of functions to be raised and you don't want to have all the scripts added uh, you know uh, then yeah speech input handler uh, would be the right way to go again especially when you know the only way to raise this particular action is only by speech yeah, there is no other sense to uh, go with an action handler. You can easily go for a speech input handler. Right? So that's that's the key difference uh, between these two ways of uh, interacting. Right? So uh, yeah, that's that's basically uh, what I wanted to cover in this particular session about a dictation and uh, the speech uh, voice commands. All right. Uh, so um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much. Uh, I want to cover in this one and uh, uh, as always if you have any questions or comments uh, any feedback feel free uh, to post it and uh, any questions I'll answer as soon as possible at the best of my capability and um, well until then um, uh, we'll see you next time thank you bye